Dr. Rajamahindran here. So we are going to see the surgery questions which are asked in exam in INI set today. So compared to previous paper, the last INI set was very easy in surgery also. This paper is a little tough. I cannot say it is so, so tough but it is a little tough compared to the previous paper. But most of them are as usual clinical questions or high yield questions. Just uh, this question I want to put a disclaimer. These are not direct questions. I have just collected the pattern questions which are asked in the exam and I am discussing and I do not have the exact choices and just now we are recalling from the various students and uh, when you are watching this video if you feel something is missing or something to be edited or some choices to be added you can always discuss in this YouTube comments itself I will be replying you okay. So this is a very simple question most of you would have answered this a patient underwent mastectomy and this drain is kept. What type of drain is this? This is a simple question this is a drain which is actually a uh, Romovac, we call it as Romovac suction drain. This is the suction drain. It is a closed suction drain. Okay, this is closed suction drain. I hope most of you would have been correct in this. There, are, there, won't, there won't be chances for you to make a mistake in this. Last year they asked about Pratt's drain. This, this year they asked about Romovac drain. So I am not making a detailed discussion. Soon I will make a detailed discussion. Just I am giving a fast review. A midline neck swelling moves with the deglutition. The patient is having a midline swelling which is moving with the deglutition. Patient has tachycardia and exophthalmos. This is not an image based question, it is a theory question. As tachycardia and exophthalmos means patient may be having thyrotoxicosis. What are the investigations to be done? So patient is having thyrotoxicosis. So I should confirm it by thyroid function test. And ultrasound neck is a part of all the cases. Um, and FNAC is a must. FNAC is a must for all the cases and if at all you can avoid only thyroid scan only we can avoid thyroid scan thyroid scan is not always done so thyroid scan is a investigation which has minimum radiation exposure so not needed always if at all you can go for two three four so yes thyroid scan can show high radio iodine uptake in a toxicosis cases and if it is a nodule we can say whether it is a high output nodule high uh, uptake means it is a heart nodule you can confirm whether it is a hot nodule or cold nodule if there are some swelling. So the examiners may have 1, 2, 3, 4 also can be an option. So but uh, if, if I am the question center, I will go for 2, 3, 4 only. I do not want to do thyroid scan unnecessarily because I am not going to derive any extra point in this. In today's modern era, only for diagnosing the meds, we are using thyroid scan. Okay. Surgery is done in carcinoma breast. Frozen section was done. So you would have seen frozen section is an on-table uh, pathological examination of the tissue. This procedure is useful for what purpose in a cancer breast? So in cancer breast, if you are doing a breast conservative surgery, we can do margins. Margins can be studied for frozen section. So it can be done. Sentinel node biopsy is the major role of frozen section. The major role of frozen section is to do sentinel node biopsy. So to confirm the diagnosis of malignancy, we don't do because we would have already confirmed the malignancy by true cut biopsy or core cut biopsy. But I have already confirmed the diagnosis. So it is wrong. So we will not use a sentinel node biopsy, uh, uh, frozen section for a confirmation of the diagnosis. So it will be already made okay, by various other investigations are there. Without knowing it is cancer breast, we do not go for theater at all. Okay, Please remember this point. So just I am giving a fast review of the choices, missing choices. If you could know the choice, please help, uh, help me with those choices. And if you feel the question is something wrong, you can always post it because I am 100% I am sure. 90% of these questions will not be a proper recall. I will be usually getting the recall only after 2 or 3 days as the students start discussing these questions. Okay. A patient presented with hematuria, urine microscopic examination reveals transitional cell cancer. It seems to be a very small cancer, 2 into 2 centimeter mass in the bladder on CT scan. So a yearly breast, a yearly bladder cancer can be easily treated by radical cystectomy. So transurethral resection of bladder tumor can be also be done I, it, but it is not complete because I want to know the T staging. T staging means the depth of infiltration is needed but it is not given the depth of infiltration tumor size and depth of infiltration is also needed. They have just mentioned 2 into 2 centimeter mass whether it is involving the superficial layer or it has gone to the muscle. If it has gone to the muscle means muscle invasive tumors need radical cystectomy. If it is not invading the muscle we can give transurethral resection of bladder and bladder tumor. So you have to give me the proper recall to come to a conclusion. Superficial cancers we can do transurethral bladder tumor resection. Muscle invasive cancers we go for radical cystectomy. So one of these two is the answer. It depends upon the CT scan finding which you would have read in the exam paper. Okay. 
So this is again a simple question. Nasogastric tube length is measured by this. A repeat question already very favorite question for national board examiners. We have to take a tape, measure from nose to ear, ear to zephyr. So that is a nasogastric tube measuring in adults. So nose to ear and zephyr process is the correct answer. This you have to go for A. I don't know the other choices. If you could know the other choices, please help me with those choices. You can fill it. So this rule we call it as next rule. Nose, ear, zephyr. This is a repeat question. We have already discussed this. So this is a simple question, a clinical question. Patient was done cholecystectomy. Patient was done a cholecystectomy. Presence with the intrahepatic bile duct radical dilatation and jaundice. So post cholecystectomy patient developing jaundice. Post cholecystectomy patient developing jaundice will be usually a, a CBD stone or a CBD clipping. These are the two reasons for a jaundice. So the question was very clearly mentioned in that there is no stone found in CBD. The question was some people are telling there is a point no stone in the bile duct or gallbladder and there is this point mentioned and there is no collection was also mentioned. So which is the investigation of choice for a bile duct injury at this point of time? I want to know whether there is a clipping of the bile duct and there is a jaundice. We don't know what is the cause. The best investigation, non-invasive investigation is MRCP. You all know very well. So though MRCP is not there, we can go with MRI. MRI and MRCP are the same. Same investigation. We are going to use no contrast in MRCP. The bile is going to act as a contrast. Same. That's Therefore, I will tell you, please go with MRI. MRI is nothing but MRCP. If you apply the MRI in the hepatobiliary system, it is known as MRCP. So the answer will be A. I don't think the others will be the correct answer. So you can go with MRCP, the investigation of choice. Next investigation will be MRCP. That will be the ideal here. So this again a repeat question. This is an 18 gauge green cannula. So 18 gauge cannula will flow 90 ml per minute. It's again a repeat question. So 90 ml per minute can flow in a 18 gauge cannula. So the answer is nearby answer is 86 ml here so please go with 86 ml so the uh, these are various internet sources usually give 90 ml for 18 gauge green vent flan so a patient who had a mcburney sensation so this is a simple question again a clinical anatomy question so this is a mcburney sensation which is nothing but also known as gridiron incision so i have now cut the skin and subcutaneous tissue perpendicular to the mcburney's point this is gridiron so what is Rutherford Morrison? I am now cutting a muscle inside. The muscle cutting incision is known as Rutherford Morrison. In muscle cutting incision, what are the three muscles in this location? That is the anatomy question. External oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominis. These three muscles will be located in this point. In the Rutherford Morrison incision, we will be cutting external oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominis. Not rectus abdominis. Rectus abdominis is here. I am not going to cut that in this incision. So answer is 1, 2, 3 will be the correct answer for this question number 8. So this again a patient had a chest trauma and chest trauma followed by the patient is having a picture shown here. This is an x-ray showing you a traumatic injury of diaphragm with the bowel has gone inside. So stomach or bowel has gone inside. So this is a traumatic diaphragmatic hernia. What should not be done is, I should not think it is pneumothorax and I should put a ICD. ICD should not be done. ICD is contraindicated in diaphragmatic hernia. I will put an ICD, but after repairing the hernia, if I try to put an ICD, I will puncture the bowel. Please be careful. Diaphragmatic hernia, two things should not be done. ICD should not be put and you should not give overall, yes, what, uh, uh, that, Without intubating directly into trachea, we should not give a bag and mask ventilation is contraindicated. Bag and mask ventilation should not be done. So these are the two things that should not be done. ICD and bag and mask ventilation should not be done for diaphragmatic hernias. Patient had, these are all improper recalls. I could not get the exact choices. I could not get the exact questions. But I want to just uh, make you come with the correct choices so that I can make a clear cut discussion in the next session. So patient had a chest injury, midline injection is planned, what complications can happen? So this is showing a clavicle fracture in x-ray. So they are probably going for a midline injection. So when they are going for a midline injection with a clavicle fracture, there are chances 
especially uh, if it is a left side clavicle which was shown in the picture i am telling you if it is a left side clavicle which is shown in the picture means you can get chylothorax i got a picture of right side here but if it is a left side injury again it is not a pure surgery question it is an applied anatomy question if it is a left side clavicle shown in the image means it is chylothorax which is going to be injuring the thoracic duct as it is entering here so patient may develop a chylothorax so please remember this have this in mind patient with a laceration over arm it's actually image based question i didn't get an image so I'll, so there is a image showing you there is no pulse in the ulnar artery and medial artery and there is a brachial artery having an injury of 2.5 cm injury there is a gap of 2.5 cm longitudinal gap so this much of gap we cannot approximate so we have to use graft that's the answer so long gap this is a brachial artery here this here 2.5 cm gap is present there is no flow seen distally i should immediately put a graft so graft is the correct answer for this question so regarding hepatocellular cancer and treatment regarding hepatocellular cancer and treatment increasing incidence is true trans arterial chemoembolization is true epilomumab is a new drug which is introduced nash and nafad are risk factors i'm I, I, i'm not sure about the perfect choices but all these are true answers all four are correct there is increasing incidence alcoholic fatty liver disease getting high risk of hcc nowadays ipo ipilumumab is a new drug introduced tas everything is correct in this question which is not a luts lower urinary tract symptom so this is what we are expecting in future the questions will be directly from bailey and rao this is a question directly from bailey and rao urgency hesitancy frequency everything is seen what is it not there i don't know you have to give me the choice to find out hesitancy poor flow you can see luts symptoms can be described in page number 1459 of bailey poor flow intermittent stream dribbling sensation of incomplete emptying retention frequency nocturia urgency urge incontinence and nocturnal incontinence these are the repeat question actually this is a repeat question that has been asked already in national board exam so please remember what are the voiding symptoms what are the storage symptoms of this injury okay most common cause of urinary obstruction in a male neonate so the most common cause of urinary obstruction in male babies is posterior urethral valve is the most common cause of bladder outlet obstruction okay posterior urethral valve so there is another one cause is also there that is congenital pelvic urethral junction so i don't know whether that was given in the choice or not but if both are there you have to go for posterior urethral valve will be the best for male so for a male baby posterior urethral valve will be a correct answer so if you have to know whether there is puv or whether there is pelvic urethral junction obstruction was given so kindly post the questions in t bar m me surgery sixer surgery sixer telegram group or you can follow me on my facebook surgery sixer group so you can always post your questions and queries in these two groups if you are a telegram user you can come here if you are a facebook user you can use surgery sixer or if you are an instagram user also you are most welcome to surgery sixer i am new here to instagram press okay so sorry for the incomplete discussion but definitely this will be just an, uh, giving you an eye opening for further discussion and we will be making a new session soon thank you